What's going on, everyone? I, I am KJ, and this is the Artist Sound Show. Welcome. This is a live show, and I answer live questions on the show. Today's topic is making the beat, and uh, we'll be using Logic Pro and or machine, depending on how I feel, you know, where we go in, in the show. You never know what you're going to do. So um, I don't always use the machine. Not on every project. Sometimes I'm using Logic all the way through, but I always find myself using Machine as a plug-in inside of Logic Pro. I will say that. But um, I have um, some drums that I made my own preset. And my ma I made my own my own kit or whatever. Uh, so now I'm currently in. I'm inside of Logic at the moment, so this is how we're going to start it off using using Logic. Let me see if I can create the tempo. Let's see. Kind of want to. Too slow. It's gonna put it at 85. Let's see how that. Yeah, that's cool. I'm just hearing something in my head. Something like that. Two, three. Quantize that, lock that in, and Okay, I'm using battery at the moment, and I didn't quite fill this this drum kit up with much. I just have like a snare and some effects in here. Snare of a, a bass drum. I need to continue building it. I think I want to use on those hats. Let's uh play that. Quantize that. Thank you. 
right. So I got a basic full by loop here. As you can see, I got my my battery. Um, pet, uh, labeling your tracks is essential. That's what I always always stress that on everything that I do, all my shows. Labeling is definitely essential. The cool thing about Logic and the Mavericks OS system is that if my if if my software crashes, it automatically saves like a um like a crash version, you know, the, the last instance of what you were doing before it actually crashed, which is pretty cool. It's like an auto save type feature that, that it does, which is really awesome. Now machine machine studio, if that crash, it's not auto save unless I haven't figured it out yet. Unless there's a way to set it where it, it uh auto saves. Like I said, I haven't figured that out yet, but it does it in Logic, which is cool. It's real cool. I'm gonna bring these down because I'm kind of peeking. And I'm gonna play with some some other sounds to to get a I don't know let's see <laughs> I explained before I am not a keyboardist so I cannot play I can only do it in sections and because I have an ear I can find whatever know that I'm achieving so it's kind of the way I do things um, let's quantize that <laughs> D actually duplicate the track, you know, just to keep going. It sucks how some of these um, sometimes it comes with plugins, so that means you are loaded with tons of plugins or whatever, but it, you know, you have to deactivate some of that stuff, you know what I mean, kind of play with it. Um, some of it already come with bus, bus information. Like this is bus 4, so both of these are bus into 4, which will be this right here this is a large I believe that's large large hall main floor this is a reverb 
and it's using the um, logic logic revert it's pretty cool and then it's got an EQ you know I don't need it so I'm gonna deactivate it I don't really think I need the EQ Oh, that was a subtle difference in there. The EQ, as you can see, um, it's already a preset in here. So I'll leave that there. <laughs> leave that there, unless I am bouncing everything out as as audio for each for each channel, um, and then deactivate the the the, um, the EQ or reverb or whatever. But yeah, that's that's how I do that. Let's let's add a piano. Actually, we're gonna label that Oregon. Label that Oregon, and I want I want a piano. And I guess we'll just use what comes up in Logic. And I gotta adjust the drums too because it wasn't hitting like I need to. Let me show you something. I don't, I'm not sure if I showed you guys this before, but this drum pattern up here, that's something. Now, for the kit that we're using, I got kind of happy and just did everything. You know what I mean? When you win something, you just you just go with the flow. You just keep going, right? All right. So basically. What I want to do is split them up because I need the, the kick to be on its own channel, and then the the other snail, the snare, the metal sound, semi metal sound, or whatever you want to call it, needs to be on its own as separate separate channel. Okay, so usually what I do in this instance. And, and a lot of times, like I say, when you got kits up, you just you find a snare, you find some hats, you find a crash, you find whatever you're trying to do, and you just start creating, and you just do it all in one take. Sometimes it's good doing it that way, but when you want to break everything apart because you want to put a, a, a certain 
a certain type of EQ setting on the snare or you want the, the reverb to reflect a certain a certain thing within what you did. What I usually would do, I'll hit Apple D, I'll duplicate the track, and I'll hit my Alt button and click and bring down. And you let go of your mouse first, otherwise it won't copy correctly. What I did was create a duplicate copy of both, and both of them are, are the same thing, okay? Up here, what I'm going to do, I'm actually label this as kick. I'm going to label that as kick because that's what I wanted to do. And then this would be the, the snare part right here. Now, in my kick, you got to be careful. You got to pay attention to what you're doing now. Let's see. Okay, so that's my kick. So I want to leave that alone. Now, up here is what I want to take out. Take that out. I'll just delete it, period. And you can see up here that I deleted it. Down here, I'll do the same, but this time to the kick. I'll just drag it along. And that was a, you know, excuse me if I burst out your eardrums, but that's what happens. And it definitely hyped up the the um, the, the, the signal. But what I did was I separated the kick from the snare. So now on this channel. Okay. All right. So I separated them, and I think I want to do a couple of adjustments to the kick before I actually put a put some type of um, transient plug-in on it. Um, and this is the tool I love using, like. Let's see if I can maximize the view here so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm I'm in the piano roll, right? I'm 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 on the editing end and I love editing inside of Pro Tools. I mean, I'm sorry, not Pro Tools, Logic Pro. Um I actually like editing inside of Logic Pro better than Pro Tools actually now that I mention it. Um Pro Tools is not that sweet in regards to MIDI um editing MIDI. But Pro Tools is real good for editing audio. But I just use Logic Pro for everything. But anyway, I got a couple of things going on in this kick that I want to adjust. And essentially what I do most of the times, I usually change my secondary tool to velocity because that's just, you know, that's just what I use. As that's always what I'm doing. I'm always in here adjusting the velocity of, of any given MIDI note. So I always change this to velocity tool and if I need another tool my system is set up where I hit escape and I can select whatever I need right quick say I need a pencil tool right quick and I just collect that and do what I do add a note here whatever whatever case may be and if I need to come out of this tool to go back to my pointer tool I just hit escape twice and then it put me back in my pointer tool so it's like a quick a quick uh, tool feature that you can use if I need it again, and everything is is coded by numbers, and the last two is is letters. The last two is Q and W. So I also use the the um, the fading tool quite often. So if I need to, you know, like say for instance, I'm I'm uh, cross fading or something like that um, to audio, and essentially I'm using. I'm 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 really using that feature for drums. Well, I'm using it for everything, but a lot of times I, I use it, I'm using that for drums, crossfading. You know, when I'm crossfading, there's usually drums that I'm that I'm using that for. And I'll just hit my escape button twice. Well, one one time, and I'll hit zero, zero by default. Like that's because I'm always doing it. So I know to go to zero instead of scrolling all the way down, scrolling my mouse all the way down to zero. I just hit zero or Five for scissors, you know what I mean? Like you can just hit hit a number and it automatically switch switch for you, you know. Now now I have uh let's go back hit five. Now I have scissors, so if I need to go and hit seven, now I have the mute tool. I'm not really sure why the mute tool is there because I um don't use that. I just usually hit M. M on my keyboard for the mute.
but it's a good feature for the for those of you that find it useful. So my kick. This right here, and I'll just hit my Apple or my Command and bring 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 it up. Or you can just use this. It's actually the, you know this is pretty cool. You can select on a on a note and just turn it up right here. I never really use that. I just always use it the way I was just so I showed you, you know, by making my secondary tool the velocity tool. Wow. Um, yeah. See this note right here. Let's see. Let's move that up. So either way you want to do it is fine. Like this. Uh, let's see. One fourteen. I'll bring this down to maybe one fourteen. It's too hot. We editing, editing um, the kick, the kick MIDI notes. All right, so basically, I don't have to spend a whole lot of time doing this. Some people would rather like hitting hitting all 127s across, but I don't like doing that depending on what I'm doing. You know, I would rather edit my stuff to make it sound like I want to give me that 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 human that human feel. You know, I don't want everything to sound even though I'm producing inside of logic and I guess the style of the music currently you know that we're working on now would you know everything is locked to a grid but I still want some type of humanization in it I don't want it totally mechanical or digital sounding all the way through as every as you know um, when you when you when you have different lot different velocities going on sometimes sometimes that uh that sample gives off a different sound so for instance As you can see, I'm, I'm hitting it soft, then I'm, you know, it just, sometimes it, you know, it just sounds different all the way at, at 127 from, um, say, the velocity of 80 or something like that, you know, sometimes it just, it just sounds different. Sometimes I bring down everything depending on what I'm doing just because it gives, it gives it's a different tone, you know, like I might go in and select it. Uh, the entire, the entire. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna. But you get what I'm saying. I, I'll sometimes select everything and bring everything down because of a different tone that I'm getting, or I'll bring everything up because of a certain tone that it produces. You know what I mean? I could de I could definitely go in and make this all 127s if I want to. Just select them all and hit your um your alt with your um. Your alt and your command button at the same time, and, and and make them go all the way to 127. That's how that's how you would do that because they all different velocities here. That's a trick for free. Don't cost you nothing. <laughs> all right, so let's. See. Right, so. Sometimes I'll go automatically and pick a, let's see, I love the transient master on my kicks. That's like a go-to thing for me. And then I will usually pick the preset of, um, let's see, punch. <laughs> Thank you. 
because I like my snare needle too. Uh, let's go label this as snare two. And I'm just gonna copy that over. Bam, it's just that easy. Piano, relabel it so I can find it better. Um, you know what? Nah, I know you guys see when I just did, and that's because I changed my tool when I was selected in the range window, and I thought I was in the piano roll. So in here, we're gonna take, we're gonna bring that back. Double click this. And in this case, we're going to lock everything to the grid one six. All right, we'll save that. I oftentimes save my work. Just it's just a matter of hitting Command S, which saves. You know, real simple, quick tool, quick keyboard shortcut. You know, you can go up here and click File and hit Save, but just hit the you know the Command S. Save save every change you get because you never know what will happen and you just may never know I'm always experiencing stuff because I like to do a lot on my computers so it's just a force of habit um, another thing I'll do is come up here and change the um, my transport my transport view to custom because it tells me everything I often watch the meters over here. The um, this is my hard drive and my CPU. All right, so let's start building this song. Let me see. I think. I think four bars is good enough for an intro, so I use markers, yes I do. It makes it makes things a whole lot easier for me. It's probably the first time I'm doing it on the show, but I definitely do use markers. And all you have to do is click this little flag button here, hover over it to say show high market tracks. This right here is the global area where you can bring in an assignment marker uh, signature you know you can actually adjust the signatures and you know what I could show you guys that one day um, how signatures work because you can change the, uh, the the signature uh, the time signature and um, the tempo actually that's what I want to show how you can make the song go fast and slow um, depending on and I use this feature inside a film. Like I had this this one film that I'm editing, and I wanted to stay sync with the person who was playing drums, or playing or performing, doing something. And I was trying to make my music follow what they were doing. And this is where you would make make that happen. At um, yeah, it's fun. It takes a lot out of me, but it's it's fun because <laughs> um. The end result is like amazing, you know what I mean? Like, wow, sounds awesome. But anyway, um, we're gonna hit this flag thingy here. That's my intro, and the the way to adjust this here 
is by clicking on yeah whatever this tab is look like okay list list editor that's what it is then you go to marketer the marker tab and double click the length I'm gonna length this at four four bars so as you can see it, it kind of like cut me right there so that's four bars of the intro and I can edit here as well I can double click and rename it or whatever and I can change the uh, the start point as well or the position so usually um, what will come next after that I can hit the plus in the add there or I can hit this plus sign right here it'll add another marker here and it start me at five 5.1.1 the fifth bar I could double click here or I could definitely double click in here and change it um, I'm just gonna label that as verse there's usually a verse like I, this is usually my song structures intro then straight into the verse mm, but the way the song is going I could probably make that a chorus I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. So what I'm going to do here is just copy and paste that on over. Actually, I may make that a chorus right here the second time around. It's actually kind of funny. Okay. Well. <laughs> I don't know why it's giving me such a hard time to delete stuff, but yeah. to go deep into production mode just so I can get as, uh, as much stuff as I can done on the show I'm hearing things and I definitely definitely want to see how much I can get in and I'll try to explain as I go along let's see I need the um That's what I need right there. Yeah, sometimes I'll just to avoid having a bunch of, um, you know, like this, this definitely created, uh, let's see. This is a plug-in. This is a plug-in, the EQ, then the delay, and then it busts several things. So a lot of times I will just export this out as Control B. I'll export it out, delete all that other extra stuff. So let's, just, let's just call it. Um, I will label this as Mallet Mallet Symbol because that's what it is. All right, and I'll get rid of this. That way, I just all I have is the um the wave.
kind of weak. And, uh, just a little bit. Let's add a, it's definitely lacking a base. We want to relabel this as chorus. So I'm feeling something bigger than a verse right here. We want to add a bass line. Let's see what we have. Shorten my loop. I kind of hit the um, the C a little harder than what I want. Actually, sound pretty cool. Let's see if I can fix that in my event. Just quantized everything and I brought my velocity down to 120. I can imagine that being a problem as I add other instrumentation. Uh, I got a compressor here. I can press it more. I'm not going to mess with the side chaining for this because my kick is not even fighting right now. Now, if you need more volume, say an instrument is too low, I never go past zero on the channel down here. I don't suggest that. You see that? I sing sessions where people push stuff all the way up to the max. I wouldn't do that. I'll bring it. I usually would just adjust the levels inside of a compressor or something like that. You can press it. Over here, adjust your threshold, and then bring up the gain. And if 
thing I like about this compressor is it also has a limiter in here. So oftentimes I'll adjust the limiter just so it won't go peaking. <laughs> So as you can see down here, my signal is coming through hot enough, but not in the red. And I'll just bring me down some, you know. Yeah, looks like that. Rename it to base. Save. I kind of know what I want to hear. Hit the wrong note, but kept going because, yeah, let's see, where was it? This one, just like that. Let's quantize that. Chorus. Gonna make that sixteen. No, eight. And we're gonna build another one, put it at thirteen. You see how I did that? I can just create one and just put it where I want to. And we're gonna call this verse. And the verse is also eight bars too. Bam. Save. That's how we're gonna do that. And we can also color code everything if we need to. Rings. All right. Strings or sent something. I don't know. Let's see what this is. And I usually bring down the volume because it did come in kind of hot.
Take that, glue that. What are they talking about? What they mean? Let's glue that together. There we go. And push this back. Uh, push that back. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to copy this over like that. here just like that so I can follow the baseline and this I can actually glue why I keep saying that I can glue that together I'm gonna quantize all of those boom just like that <laughs> copy it over to the next section but I want to get some more strings session strings to see what that would sound like copy that over there like Here's a trick when editing, like say if you just want to thicken up something, you will do like what you see me doing here. I have two strings right here, and I'm just thickening them up just so they can sound fuller. You can select them both, and because they are on the same note, you can definitely adjust all of them like, like they're on the same note. Well, actually, it would be this one and this one. Strings. When you're dealing with strings, you, you, you want some of them to overlap. So, like this, and they can overlap a little bit like that. I just won't overlap the same note like this right here over it to this one. I just I could I couldn't do that because is it? I think it'll cut out. That's not the sound I'm I'm going for. So these I'll lap these over. Here. This one and this and this one. Lap that over. So, yeah. Just so they sound better. Oh, that one too. Yep, yep. So, for instance. <laughs> too much okay select them again let's go to our piano and I got those selected select those select that select that Select those, select those. Uh, I didn't move these, but I'm gonna get those, that, and that one. And we're gonna 
just kind of moving back just a tad bit. So. And see, this one sound chopped, so I'm going to have to move that over something like that. Yeah, I'm just showing you some some tricks as I go along, and I think I want to duplicate this again. Bring that down. Let's see what else I can get. Maybe some cinema strings might help thicken it. Let's uh, select it all. Bring it down an octave, which is option shift. And this right here, I'll bring the crash over. over some more strings. I'm hearing a staccato. Uh, let's see what cellos were. Let's, bring up some. let's go to uh, Sounds pretty cool. Okay, now for the strings, I think I'm going to double this some more, but what I want to do is actually double it with a synth. Yeah, a synth will definitely thicken it. Um, a pad or something. Let's see what that is. And I'm just using all Logic Stock stuff for the moment. See what that that does. I go in and make this an octave, uh, an octave higher. If I want to use something like that, I definitely have to adjust the cutoff. Or the 
long. There we go. But it's still kind of like a residue. Let's bring this long back up. Yeah. That was the delay I was experiencing. Let's see what that sound like. Yeah, yeah. You can see what I did. It kind of thickened it up a little bit. I'll probably go around and play with the settings a little bit more just to, um, I don't know. I might put a road in there and then it kind of thicken up, thicken you know the middle. It's still kind of thin to me. Um, add more synths or whatever. <laughs> Airy, so I'll probably take that out. Uh, what else would I put there? Um, Yeah, unfortunately, I can't finish the entire song like I planned on, but I think I got a nice amount done. I got a intro, I got the chorus, then I got the verse, and essentially what I will do next is I would um, add this stuff again. I could definitely do what I've been doing. What I what would you guys see me do? Grab this and I'll just hit my my alt key and bring it over like that. Or I can just grab and just make this whole section loop. And inside of logic is this nice feature called repeat section. You just click that and it just repeats all for you. And then if you experience stuff like this. That's because it's, these are looped. And all you, all you have to do is just bring it back. And I can actually erase that. Not a biggie. But 
What comes along with that is the marker. The markers uh, comes along with it. And you just go and change however you need to in case something changed. And you just add on whatever. So, and then this is the other thing that I like to do. I like to click on view, change my view to secondary ruler because it helps assist me in the time how long my song is. I like to know how long my song is. I like to stay within a certain time parameter. And when I get projects sometimes, that, that is a limitation. They say, okay, we need something um, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, I'm sorry, or we need something no less than two minutes or something like that. So I definitely keep an eye on my time here. And I just look at this here. And um, yeah, I have my friends texting me. Yeah, it's awesome stuff there. All right, y'all. So that's 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 pretty much it. That's that's pretty much all I have to show. Um, that's me creating a beat inside of Logic Pro. I hope that I was able to help address some of the questions that you may have if you work in the Logic Pro as well. And um, yeah, join me next Thursday. And I'm not even sure what the topic gonna be. <laughs> but uh yeah um please please be sure to um to know that these sessions are interactive so if you guys got questions you can definitely ask me questions while I'm live every Thursday 8 p.m. central standard time right here from the studio Art of Sound I am your boy KJ and that's K J E I H I spell my name quite different from the most from most people. Um, be sure to always check out our website. We always have stuff going on, as you can see. Um, currently, still updating the site, putting new things on there. Uh, we got some things I'm working on for you guys to release in the near future. And um, subscribe to my channel, YouTube.com/slash KSound K S O U N D D. I definitely appreciate it. And I'm going to be out of here. I look forward to seeing you guys and helping you guys out next time. All right? All right.